too late anymore. Hello, good morning, everybody. We are back in the saddle here, doing the commentaries live. We have been absent from the scene for about two weeks because uh, the mighty old virus has been circulating in this house. <coughs> and <laughs> we have been sick. Uh, so anyway, we are back and we will do the commentary now. Okay, the gospel for today is taken from St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 21 to 24. Okay, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. Okay? These are very, very important uh, words. You, you keep that in mind. Nobody knows the Father nor the Son except the ones to whom the Son has chosen to reveal the Father and the Son. Okay? And Jesus says, turning to his disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Who do they see? Me. Jesus. Okay? For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you heard, what you hear, but did not hear it. This reminds me of Simeon, Simeon who, uh, who saw Jesus at the presentation of the temple, when Our Lady and St. Joseph brought Jesus to the temple. What did Simeon uh, say? The old man, Simeon, he said, now, now, Lord, you can take your servant, your servant can go in peace because my eyes have seen the salvation of the world. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> now, our Lord tells us here uh, uh, about the same luck that Simeon had. See? He's saying to his disciples, Lucky are you because you see what you see and you hear what you hear. See? Jesus Christ, that I am here. You can see me. You can touch me. You can talk to me. You can converse with me. Right? We are indeed lucky because it, to us, to us, the Godhead, God the Father, and Jesus Christ had been revealed. And um, so that is why, that is why um, what I was telling you about Thanksgiving, when we were celebrating Thanksgiving, right? What was I telling you? Anybody recalls? I said, Thanksgiving should be something that doesn't happen only in one day right but it should be a habit every day to give thanks to give thanks to god every day particularly particularly because of this that jesus is talking about right because of the fact that we know jesus we see jesus we touch jesus every day we have an opportunity not only to to be with jesus and to pray and to and to uh and to uh, worship Jesus, but to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Okay? In a sense, we are we are even luckier than the apostles. Okay? In 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 a sense, because the first three years that Jesus was with them, yeah, they they were in his company, but they never had him inside of them. Okay? And here we are, we receive Jesus every day at Holy Communion, assuming that we are in the state of grace. Okay? So we are very lucky, very lucky indeed. We are very fortunate that we are recipients of this kind of blessing, this kind of grace. Okay? <clears throat> and that we have been chosen by Jesus, chosen because we, uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, these things are only revealed to the ones that God the Father and Jesus chooses to reveal them. And we have been one of those fortunate ones that he has chosen to reveal himself to. So we should be very grateful for this grace. And that is why every day for us should be Thanksgiving Day. 
really. And that is why we have to take very good care of the thanksgiving we do after receiving Holy Communion. Eh? Let, let, us, let us examine ourselves on that point. See? How do we give thanks to our Lord after we receive Him at Communion every day? Are we really thankful? Do we really, do we really spend time in thanksgiving or are we distracted with other things? Or are we busy keeping the uh, altar serving things away eh? or uh, removing our vesture and uh, but but our mind is somewhere else eh? we have to understand that Jesus is within us eh? we have just received Jesus in communion how do we give thanks it's it's a very important Catholic practice folks to give thanks after receiving our Lord in Holy Communion many of us don't do that after communion we we get distracted with the songs at mass. We uh, we leave right away after we uh, you know after uh, after mass and the last note is sung. We leave right away. We start chatting with people. We forget that we're carrying our Lord in the whole in, in our souls and, and you know in our, in our bodies. We are tabernacles of of our Lord. We we just received our Lord in Holy Communion, and we are so oblivious of that. See? We have lost the practice of thanksgiving after mass. See? So that's one thing that we have to try and practice. And for us, Thanksgiving is very real. It's a daily practice. Not only for communion, but for many other things that we receive all throughout the day. Okay? So let us, let us be thankful all the time. Now, uh, the second thing I want to comment here about this, this gospel is, is the fact that our Lord says here, um, uh, I give you praise, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, see, you have revealed them to the childlike. Okay? What does that mean? Our Lord reveals himself to those who are simple, the childlike. See? People who have the disposition of being like uh, little children. Little children are very simple. Right? Very simple. They have no airs of complications uh, uh, in themselves. They're not puffed up. They're not full of themselves. They're not pry, proud in, in thinking that they can do everything already. Right? Although they try. Right? But at the same time, you see that they're so humble to, to ask for, for the help that they need. They nag Papa and Mommy to, uh, when they need anything. They, they, they just blurt out and say what they want to say. Right? Without second guessing what you're thinking about, without thinking twice about anything, they are that simple. That's what children do. And our Lord tells us we have to be childlike, not childish. Okay? That's different. We don't have to be babyish in front of God, but we have to have a childlike simplicity. Simplicity is the is the is the synonym of being childlike here. Eh? without being complicated inside, without second-guessing our Lord, without, um, without hiding things from God, because children don't hide. They cannot hide anything. They're so, they're so transparent. And God, who knows everything, okay? uh, we cannot hide anything from God anyway. Eh? So we have to be very transparent, very childlike, very simple. And that is the kind of person to whom Jesus reveals more of himself. Okay? He reveals more of himself in a personal, intimate way when we are childlike. If we are full of sin because of our pride and we are not sorry for them, we ex make excuses for our sins, we justify our sins, we make it, uh, you know, we, we, we put up all sorts of walls so that uh, uh, we are not any more transparent and we become complicated, well, Jesus cannot reveal himself to us. All the more are we blinded and we cannot see Jesus the way he wants to communicate himself to us. Okay? So, um, we have to emulate the childlike simplicity of children. To be like little children. And we have a fantastic opportunity this coming Christmas. Right? We are still in the season of Advent, but Christmas is coming. And look at how Jesus comes to us. He comes to us as a child, as a baby. 
he did not come down to earth as a king, powerful and mighty and, you know. No, although he is king, but he came to us as a child. And you know why? So that we can approach him better. It's easier. It's a lot easier to approach a child, right? It's nice to, 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 to uh, play around with a little child. It's nice to approach a little child. And Jesus, in his, in his uh, almighty wisdom, God's wisdom, has chosen to come down to earth as a child. Why? So that it could be easier for us to approach him. And so that we can learn from his own simplicity as to how we should be towards him, towards God. Okay? So simplicity and thanksgiving, those are the two lessons of this gospel today. Simplicity and thanksgiving. Let us always be thankful for all the graces that God has given us. Thankful for the Eucharist. Thankful for many of the things that uh, you know he has blessed our family with. And us personally. And to do that, let us be simple. Because only in simplicity do we recognize, are we going to recognize God behind all the graces that he gives us. If we are complicated, if we are covered with sin and all the justification we create for sin, we cannot see God. We cannot see God because we are not simple. And therefore, we cannot thank God because we don't see Him. Okay? Okay, that's it for us, folks. We are off to Mass this morning. And hopefully, we will uh, keep the pace again. Assuming nobody gets sick again, especially me. I was down myself. So anyway, uh, we'll keep the pace up. And it's a nice season we are in. Thanks, I mean... Uh, um, Advent is a nice time to be preparing, preparing for Christmas. It's not Christmas yet. Even if you hear all the Christmas carols and uh, all the decorations are up, okay? uh, it is a moment of anticipation, anticipation and preparation. If I may remind you, preparation, preparation and reparation. Let's clean house, clean house, not the house that we live in, but the house of our soul so that Jesus may come to, to this stable to the stable of our own souls. Let's clean it up properly. And that's the best way to prepare, with sacrifice and with prayer. Prayer and sacrifice is the best way to prepare for the coming of Jesus at Christmas. And we do that during this time of Advent. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. And to those of you around the globe who are about to sleep, good night. Have a good night's sleep. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye.